Well, good morning and welcome to this Jersey Chamber of Commerce webinar in conjunction with Jersey Business. Uh, in the webinar, we'll share the results of the recent Jersey Business Productivity Survey, uh, give details on support on improving productivity, and we'll also discuss the Productivity Support Scheme. On screen, you'll see we have the Chief Operating Officer from Jersey Business, Alexia McClure. We've got the Head of Business, Kenny Sillias, and we've also got Christine Walwyn, who's the Business Improvement Specialist for Jersey Business Support. Uh, delighted to have them with us. Thank you all three for joining us. And thanks to everyone who's joined us online and registered for this. We've already got uh, some comments coming in. And if you have a question, then the Q&A box at the bottom is where you would put that. And we'll have some questions coming in in just a little while. Before we start, there was a survey that's been run by Jersey Business on productivity. And I think that where we should really start is with you, Alexia, and just um, start with that survey and the results of it. So we can just digest that before we move further on that. So, Alexia, over to cool. you. Great. I'm going to share my screen uh, then, Murray, if that's OK with you, um, so that we can just have a look at these um, survey results. Hopefully you can, everyone can see that. Uh, is that okay? Um, that's okay for everybody. So um, yeah, the we um, commissioned a productivity survey um, because productivity is one of those topics that is um, quite sort of difficult and challenging to um, understand. And what we wanted to do um, at Jersey Business was to really understand um, the context of productivity within the business community in Jersey, what people think that they mean by productivity, and also how we can then um, help uh, the business community to think about productivity um, and, uh, and improve it within their own businesses. So we commissioned an independent survey. We worked with our partners for Insight. Um, the survey used their software, it was hosted online and it allowed um, anybody within the business community to take part. So we had 349 responses um, and after quality checking had 217. Um, we had a really great um, sample of participants and respondents. So we were really pleased about that from owner founders through CEOs, directors, down to middle managers and, and what I would call sort of supervisory team leader level. Um, and we had businesses that were young and old. So um, quite a lot of um, businesses that, uh, that were over 21 years old, but, um, but a really broad range from, from one to sort of 21 plus across 15 industry sectors. So the sample that, of people who responded um, was really very strong in terms of representing the business community. And I'd like to thank everybody um, on the call and not on the call who took part in it because it's been a really interesting exercise and one that we you know want to repeat on a probably on an annual basis so thank you very much for taking part if you were one of the people who responded so I thought what would uh, so we'll, so why why does it matter um, so our concept of productivity uh, improvement is about and looking at how do we inc increase the um, value added um, activity and the output that comes from business activity so productivity improvement is about removing waste and most particularly it's about freeing up time so that people can do more impactful work um, so that Businesses will benefit directly through improved efficiency, uh, increased um, qualities of pro products and services and ultimately profitability. And most importantly, indirectly by giving people purpose within the organization, retaining and developing the best talent and, more, uh, and particularly in creating an empowered culture where people can really make a difference within the organizations that they work in. Um, and it matters really because if a business isn't moving forward, it's effectively moving backwards. So it gets risk. It's at risk if it's not moving forward and evolving of being overtaken by those businesses that are adapting, those new innovators that are coming into the market. And it also is at risk of losing talent to other organizations that are taking those steps forward. So productivity is really important in a, in a number of um, different ways. And it's important to stress this isn't about reducing headcount. It's absolutely about enabling people to have more time in the business to do more valuable and interesting work. So that really is our focus in terms of um, looking at productivity and particularly in terms of um, thinking about the results of this survey. So I'm going to 
um, talk now about the detailed um, responses. I'm going to move through this quite quickly um, because it will be available um, as a presentation um, later for you to think about. And, and I think it's really interesting to think about some of the messages that are coming out of um, out of these areas. So we've grouped the responses into three different section, um, three different sections, and I'm going to uh, run through these different sections now um, with our sort of observations and some uh, some conclusions that we might draw uh, uh, at the end of it. So the first section that we'd like to cover is people and culture and some of the results uh, in terms of the responses around people and culture. So 79% uh, of respondents agreed that their employees were engaged and motivated. And if you're looking at the right hand bar chart, then 79% of people agreed, strongly agreed that employees were engaged and motivated and CEOs were most likely to, to, um, to uh, answer agreed, strongly agreed. In fact, they didn't disagree with the statement at all. 81% uh, agreed that their employees are encouraged to challenge and uh, change process to make them more efficient uh, and owners and founders most likely strong to ag agree with that statement. And 71% agreed that employees do take responsibility and have high levels of accountability within their organisation. Again, um, owner founders more likely to agree there than, um, than some of the managerial levels. Interestingly, really mixed views on how often employees actually undertake change projects within the organisation. So 56% um, said that their employees in their organisation never, rarely or only sometimes undertook improvement projects. So that's the grey, the um, orange and the brown um, responses there. And 52% that they never, rarely or only sometimes invested in skills development for employees. Interestingly, 70% of um, people responded that up to 25% of their day was unproductive. That means that 30% were saying that over 25% of their day was unproductive, which is, um, which is really, really interesting. So that's over a day a week of unproductive time that people were saying that they could identify. So overall conclusions uh, around the people and culture. It seems that senior leaders in particular, uh, and there's a real belief that employees are actively engaged and encouraged to review process, processes, but the reality is that, is that employees are not undertaking improvement projects in the, in the main. It suggests that people do know where waste is within their work, and they could change this if they were allowed to do so. But at the moment, the response is that the majority are saying they're not actually undertaking change projects. So that change is not happening within, within, the, um, within the employee part of the, of the business. So next, let's have a look at customers. This was another section that we, uh, that we asked about in the survey. So perhaps not surprisingly, 93% of people said that customers are at the heart of everything that we do. So this was a question that had the highest level of engage of uh, responses around the agree and strongly agree. And interestingly, wholesale and retail, most of their votes were in that, uh, in that agree and strongly agree. However, when we look at the detail of what actually happens on the ground, 47% said that their organizations, again, never rarely or sometimes communicate regularly with customers and 42% that they never rarely or sometimes action customer feedback. So of course that means that um, over half were um, communicating with customers and they were actioning feedback, but that proportion of almost 50% of respondents saying that they were never really engaging and acting on customer feedback is really quite high. So what can we uh, draw from that? Again, a bit of a dichotomy here. Uh, most people saying that customers are at heart of everything that they do, but at least half saying that they didn't communicate regularly with their customers and even fewer were acting on the results and the feedback that they, that they received. So again, a really interesting um, mixture uh, and, and uh, difference between the overall intent and uh, the actual action on the ground. Looking, let's look now at looking at um, the detailed responses for improving productivity and we asked a series of questions here about things that are interesting uh, in terms of that sort of process improvement side of things. So 77% agreed that their organisation was focused on innovation and interestingly again 
um, more younger organizations were more likely to strongly agree with that statement than those that had been established for over 21 years. The largest disagreement here was our, pro our process of fully automated. So 75% saying that they weren't fully automated. So um, those in finance, interestingly, were more likely to agree with this statement, saying that there was automation in their organizations. But most people here, three quarters, saying that their um, processes were not automated or fully automated. Again, mixed views on how often um, organizations reviewed systems and processes. So 44% saying businesses never rarely or sometimes reviewed processes. Um, and 58% saying that they never rarely or sometimes invested in new processes or new technology. So again, um, very uh, interesting results here. Uh, and businesses under 25, um, 21 year, years old were, were more likely to say that this was happening more frequently or continuously. Um, a high proportion um, of people here, 58% saying that they thought that businesses were wasting money. Um, so, um, so that's um, really interesting and the construction industry particularly more likely to say um, agree that they felt that the business was wasting money. And again here, um, do, the, do people feel that respondents felt that their organisation was optimising opportunities to increase productivity? A good proportion, um, 49, so almost half saying uh, yes, they did think that that was the case, but 32% saying no and 18% saying they didn't know whether or not the business was, um, was optimising um, opportunities to increase productivity. So again, what conclusions can we draw from this? Well, we're again seeing a pattern that the overarching intent is that organisations are focused on innovation that can improve their business. But again, the majority of people thinking that there were wasted opportunities, that they could see waste in their own work, that they could see opportunities for improvement were not being taken. And interestingly, that they felt that businesses were not really reviewing and investing in process or technology improvement. So again, some really interesting um, differences there between high levels of intent um, and at least 50% of the respondents thinking that that intent wasn't actually seeing it through into action. We asked also some questions about um, what were the barriers to improving productivity. So interestingly, um, here, time was, um, was a really big um, response here. So 97 um, uh, ticks in the box for a lack of time, closely followed by a lack of skills and resource. So time and skills resource was, was interesting, but also over 50 um, respondents, each saying that culture, lack of automation, automati automation, excuse me, and lack of investment um, were barriers. So quite interesting results there, but a real clear um, view that time was, uh, was a challenge in this respect. Interestingly, we also asked, well, what are your top um, tips for being uh, creating a more sort of productive um, uh, uh, environment and culture? So when we asked, uh, what, are the, what are the attributes of an, of an organization where, um, where you know, productivity improvement um, is strong. Time was, uh, was a really uh, strong response to that. Automation, better management, staff training, um, all came through as um, attributes that were um, particularly relevant to those organizations doing productivity improvement really well. So uh, a message here, I think about people giving it the time, but also, uh, you know, looking at ways to um, increase uh, communication, staff engagement. And we also see this in the top tips. Um, so we asked a question, what are the top tips that you would give other people to um, improve productivity in their organizations? And interestingly, time was not the, um, the I guess, overall, it, it's one of the challenge, one of the uh, things that you need to dedicate time to this but actually it was more about engaging with employees so employee satisfaction reg regular communication with empl with employees training um man good strong management keeping people informed those were the things that actually were the top tips around getting employees engaged in real um, productivity improvement um, opportunities so 
uh, a real message there, regular training and review was also there an investment in technology, but I think a real uh, message there around the fact that employee engagement and getting employees motivated and empowered and actually, you know, engaged in that um, are, are, are quite simple, relatively simple things to do, but actually are the things that really can perhaps have the biggest impact. So that's a bit of a rattle through um, the uh, the, the uh, survey. I'm just going to draw a few conclusions here at a high level. So, um, so high levels of agreement that employees are encouraged to challenge and change processes. However, more than half the respondents saying that that actually uh, hardly ever took place and that employees were not actually un undertaking um, ch change projects. Really strong agreement that customers are at the heart of the business, but conversely, uh, less than half of people really regularly communicating with customers and even fewer actioning customer feedback. Um, and three quarters of the respondents saying their organization was focused on innovation, but again, less than half saying that, the, that those opportunities for improvement were being optimized. So um, our conclusion um, is that it's perhaps the people and the culture of organizations that's the biggest barrier to productivity improvement in Jersey, that the, there's perhaps a disconnect between what leaders are expecting or thinking is happening and what's actually happening on the ground. But um, that might be because of hierarchical structures or it might just, just because of culture that has, uh, that you know, we've, we've got a culture maybe where we've always done things like this and so we're quite happy to, to carry on doing that. But I think, and we at Jersey Business think, that actually that creates a great opportunity because if we can engage um, leaders and we can engage people, there are of very, there are very clearly um, knowledge and experience and, uh, and people who are working in businesses who can see right now ways to make improvements. And I think um, our view is it's about unlocking that knowledge and, uh, and unlocking those opportunities to engage those people to help create improvement within organizations. That actually means that we can really accelerate increased um, efficiency and productivity within a, within a business. So by way of conclusion, a very, um, a very mixed message, but uh, very interesting. I think we see some of these um, these things coming out in the, with the organisations that we work with and some of the conversations that we have. But I think also a great opportunity um, for for improvement and uh, and hopefully we're going to come on now to how we can help and some of the things that are happening in our world that we can um, we can engage organisations with and and hopefully that will provide an, this opportunity to you know, to um, more strongly engage the, work, the workforce and people working in the business to, um, to get these productivity gains um, really working their way through. So I think that's probably enough for me, Murray. I've Alexia, that was, that, that was excellent. Thank you. Um, uh, really interesting looking at those facts and figures and, and, and always great when you get down to the stats of it. And, you know, there is, there is certainly, uh, the capacity might be a word, there is certainly opportunity there. Mm. Um, and space. There's space in there for uh, huge improvement. And if you, and if you think of a 25% improvement uh, over the course of a business, that's, that's going to add to a bottom line. That's a really interesting stat. So you're absolutely right. I think the next thing we need to do is, is look at where those improvements can be made uh, and uh, what role Jersey business can play in that. Uh, mm -hmm. You run the surveys to start off with, and I know that Christine Wallman is with us today as the uh, business improvement specialist. That's a lofty title there, Christine, uh, because uh, it's business, it's improvement, it's specialist. Um, what has Jersey business got on offer and can offer businesses? How can they help? Um, well, I'm, I'm sort of going to go, go through two areas that we can help in at the moment. The first is our offering as usual. And the second is the productivity week that we're running for the 4th of July. So let's start with our sort of regular offering. Um, as you know, um, we, we're always around for confidential independent advice from our advisory team and our industry specialist. But there are three particular programmes that are interesting and relevant to improving productivity. Um, the first being the business improvement program. Um, before I go into the detail on that, the consistent thing of these three programs is that you come out with something. They're all very practical and they come out with an improvement or a product for you to use 
within the organization. So the business improvement is run over four full days and it's about taking a process um, from start to completion, it's mapping it, it's reviewing it, it's looking at it, it's identifying any waste within it, any steps within the process that don't add value and, and improving it. Um, so participants on that have sort of seen easily 25% plus improvements in their processes. Um, very practical networking opportunities, one-to-one um, -one support with a business improvement specialist. Um, so a really, really good program um, for anybody, really, anybody that is involved in the process and wants to make it better. The second program we have is the Leading Growth Program. This is a program specifically for business leaders and owners, and they will come away with a business growth plan. Um, it is very conscious that um, business leaders and owners are time poor, so it's designed to fit around busy schedules in eight short, snappy half-day morning sessions, um, again with the benefits of networking and one-to-one -one mentor support. The third programme that we run is what we call the Omnichannel Strategy. This is more of an individual one and you come away with a brand and marketing analysis. It's about ensuring a consistent messaging across all the marketing channels um, and, and to increase your brand awareness, your marketing and your customers. There's, you know, there's a little bit of an audit, it looks at your brand, the customer landscape and a SWOT analysis of it. So there are sort of three main programmes that we do. And you know, if you're interested in any of them, they're on the Jersey Business website or you can contact any of the Jersey Business team um, to talk about it. The other thing that I was talking, I mentioned is the Productivity Week. This is a week of focused events that Jersey Business are leading in conjunction with some partners of ours um, to, to concentrate on productivity. The first session is a great session that we're running with the Chamber again with they're supporting us massively. Um, we have an international speaker, Professor Bob Emeliani, who's going to come and talk about the role of leaders in creating a culture um, that delivers increased productivity. Um, Bob Emeliani is a, a great academic, but he's also a very much business practitioner as well, having started in industry before moving into the world ac academia. And he really neatly combines the two and actually has some challenging comments and works, words for us. Um, the second event on the Thursday is the Productivity Circle. This is a launch of our new Productivity Circle, which is going to be a regular sort of sessions um, for businesses and people to be able to share ideas and practices in a business improvement arena. Um, we have specialist Brian Butler, um, who will deliver practical and interactive sessions on how the business impacts on organizational waste. Um, anybody's welcome to attend those. And then on the Friday, we have a very leadership focused event where we have got Royston Guest, who is the deliverer of, of our leading growth program and Brian Butler, who delivers the business improvement program. They're going to do a double act on looking about how to build that productive culture um, within the workplace and to get agile and resilient businesses. So three very good events. And if you're interested in any of them now, if you put your phone to your scan me codes, that will take you straight to the page where you can register onto them. As well as the actual three individual events, we have the opportunity to book a one-to-one -one session with a business improvement specialist who will talk through any issues or help identify any projects you want or be a critical friend or someone to bounce ideas off. So it's a really, really good exam, um, really, really good time to be able to get some one-to-one -one specific advice for your business. Um, again, you can book those sessions on a website or by contacting any one of the Jersey business team. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Thanks for that. Appreciate that. Um, and uh, there's an awful lot for people to digest there. Obviously, uh, we'll have uh, all of that information afterwards and we'll be able to send this information to everyone who's joined uh, this webinar today. So we can follow that up. So if you didn't get all of that at the same time, I did use the scan and it did work and it did take me right through to the chamber lunch. So uh, I'm, I'm delighted that it worked right at the right time.
so plenty of information up there on the screen at the moment, but we will make sure that everyone gets all of that crucial information. Looks like it's going to be a, a, a busy week. Um, in uh, Christine, from your experience, just and it just occurred to me that um, our business leaders are particularly good at opening themselves up for a little bit of examination because what it what it's going to show is the areas that they do very well, but also some of the areas they don't do well. And that's quite a brave step for business leaders sometimes. Um, so so I, I, I just I just wonder about it. It, it's getting that foot across the threshold almost and opening it up, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you've got to start a journey somewhere. Um, you've options if business are, are concerned about opening up then it a one-to-one -one session it's confidential it's private that's always a good place to start um and it, it doesn't really matter where you start as long as you start somewhere yeah yeah absolutely we'll come on to talk about um time and getting these things sorted in but a little while uh, before we do all of that though i'm delighted that kenny's with us head of business advisory for jersey business kenny um i, I think the next stage of this is uh, the Productivity Support Scheme Grant. And, and people will lean in forward when they see the word grant in there uh, because that, uh, that, that, that entices people a little bit more. Tell us some more about it. Yeah, abs thanks, Murray, absolutely. Um, yeah, the, the Productivity Support Scheme Grant, um, actually, you know, it comes, comes well um, after the, uh, the Business Improvement Programme. Um, once you've you've been on the Jersey Business um, pro, Business Improvement Program, you could then have a have a ready-made project and consider applying for the Productivity Support Scheme Grant, which I'm just about to speak with you about. Um, any applications will actually come into Jersey Business for this initially expressions of interest, and uh, our advisory team will work with any applicants um, right up to the application stage. So I'm I'm going to just run through a few. Um, Hi highlights of the scheme or, or headlines of the scheme. So what is the productivity support scheme, the principles of it, support provided, type of project that can be supported and qualifying criteria. So um, last year I actually saw the launch of the scheme as a pilot, um, really brought in to help with the recovery um, of the economy. As we all know, businesses have had a tough couple of years of it. So, you know, government are are, are keen to support those businesses who want to improve and become more efficient. Um, the aim of the scheme is to make productivity gains, which they wouldn't normally be able to make without that support. Um, and government are going to provide a 50-50 matched funding um, to any business who has a, a project which can sufficiently meet five assessment areas. Those areas being having a project plan and the management um, capable of carrying it out. So a clear project plan, a comprehensive risk assessment, and the resources available to complete the project. A justifiable project, um, wh why the business and project requires government funding. Um, measures such as input cost base, uh, your output and revenue, and process efficiency created from, um, from the project. Uh, we also look to ultimately lead to an increase in productivity of over 5% over a pre-agreed period. Um, and also, it, it, it would be good to see um, the living wage and minimum wage being adopted across all businesses who are applying for the scheme. The support being provided, um, as I said, it's 50-50 funding. Uh, the minimum project would be £5,000. So... Um, the client, the business would put in two and a half thousand and government would provide two and a half thousand right up to a maximum uh, government grant of £50,000 for £100,000 project or, or more um, than that. Um, the application window for this year is open until the 16th of October with any later applications um, being considered in 2023. Projects which are likely to fall into the categories or would be technology applications. So just to sort of bring that to life a bit, you could be looking at something like, and we did, we did see an application from a business um, to improve their website, which would allow them to take real-time bookings, real-time payments, and also join up to their accounting uh, platform. So that really would bring some a lot of efficiencies to, to many businesses on, on the technology side. Process improvement. So that, that could be equipment, um, an improved um, production process, 
Um, one we did see was an alarm system which improved production by um, preventing waste. Um, we would also look at, at the category of um, improved or new products and services which, which align themselves well to a business um, and also new markets um, or, or the attempt to gain increased market share. Qualifying criteria, what does or doesn't qualify? Um, the applicant business must have been operating for 18 months, uh, have to be registered and controlled here in Jersey, and also must hold a Jersey business license, um, I think, which most businesses will, will have already. Um, it is not designed to specifically uh, increase employee numbers within a business. Um, and if you've previously applied for or currently applying for government funding for productivity, it would have to be materially different from what you're already applying for. You also um, can't have progressed the project to the point of paying for or already ordered services or equipment. Moving on to when and how to apply, um, expressions of interest can be um, applied through the Jersey Business website. Uh, we would then work with you on your, bus your business eligibility, which I've just covered, um, working with you on the identified project and to ensure it's eligible, uh, working with you on a fully costed project plan, um, and you would also have to have up-to-date uh, business financial information, so up-to-date cash flows, um, accounts, management accounts, etc. After that, um, you and, and all those boxes have been ticked, you can then move on to a formal application um, with your detailed project plan, signing a declaration, providing a board resolution, formalities really. Um, and after a, a satisfactory final review, someone from our advisory team would then put your application onto government. Um, thereafter, government will be having regular sittings of panels to review the applications. Um, and those will be held at regular intervals right up until the 16th of October, which I mentioned already is the closing date for the scheme. Um, that's really a quick whistle stop tour of the scheme. Um, more detail can be provided by going onto the website or at Jersey Business or Government's websites or coming and speaking to us at Jersey Business. We're more than happy to sit down and discuss your plan with you. Kenny, thank you very much indeed. That's fairly comprehensive. And uh, obviously the 50-50 the government grant that comes in for this. Um, is this an ongoing, uh, uh, is this the first year of many years that we're likely to see this? That's, that's the expectation, yes, Murray. Um, closing date may well be 16th of October, um, but moving into 2023, we would expect the scheme to be available uh, going forward. And the and the real criteria and the, the principle of the scheme. This is this is about improving the business. This is about getting getting the business to work in a better, more productive way. Absolutely, yeah. Um, based on everything that Alexis told us on the on the survey and what Christine's mentioned, uh, it's identifying issues that can be improved within the business rather than you know rather than taking that we've always done it that way approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. OK, thank you very much indeed for that. Uh, thank you all three for guiding us through. Uh, the questions will come in at this point, and uh, that's probably the point where we probably uh, don't do the shared screen, which I know that uh, Alexis is just about to. There we go. And we're back to the four of us on the screen. Oh, lucky you viewers. Uh, under the scheme, uh, the qualifying criteria relating to the size of the business and the financial state of the business, state of the business. Uh, Kenny, this is one for you, I think. Um, and I was about to ask this, in terms of the financial status of the business, um, it, would, 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 that, would that matter a great deal? I mean, obviously, you've got to provide financial statements and background to the business. But uh, in terms of the financial status, will it have to have a certain amount of money in the bank? If it's got too much money in the bank, will they say, well, no, actually, you can pay for this yourself? Uh, where, where does that criteria lie? Yeah. I suppose you would say these are the grey areas, Murray. Um, there's, it's an inexact science, really. I mean, the scheme is ultimately about supporting good businesses who want to better themselves. Um, start, starting at perhaps a business with, a, with, with weak financials, with a, a weak um, balance sheet, 
you know, we may perhaps look at that and, and assess whether the, the business is capable of, um, of carrying out the project successfully. So that would be taken into consideration. Um, a, stronger, a strong business um, with a strong management team capable of delivering the project, you know, are probably um, more likely to be the businesses which will, will have those 5% gains, which are, which are the measure. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, questions coming in, and do keep them coming in on the Q&A box at the bottom. You'll see uh, a chat question that's come in from David. He said, uh, do we think such projects are best government-led or through business planning? Alexia, I'm going to come to you on this one first. You know I was going to come to you first on this. Uh, do, you, do you think the uh, government-led or business planning? Well, I think the certainly in terms of the support that we provide and the productivity um, grant, that is very definitely all of that's focused on individual businesses. So I think, um, if, you know, from that perspective, what we're looking for and what we're supporting are individual businesses who've got opportunities for improvement. Um, you know, government. So this is business led. Um, and what we're keen to do is to we, what you might see characteristics across different industry sectors, for example, where you think, well, for example, um, there might be lots of technology challenges, omnichannel, you know, uh, challenges for retailers and for hospitality businesses because of the type of business that they've got. So we might see um, we might see examples uh, and trends within different industry sectors. But the, this, this particular support, the scheme, uh, the grant scheme and our support is definitely business led. And we're really keen to encourage and to talk to businesses because almost everybody's got something that they can improve. And uh, back to, I think, your previous point, a small business without a lot of resource actually can get a, ma a massive um, productivity and efficiency gain by just looking at a little, few little simple bits of technology or just tweaking a few processes. So what we're trying to do is to provide support through, through Christine and the Business Improvement Programme for you know, individual projects or for a project that would be best led through the programme. Uh, and then that those projects, if they require a lot of investment, the, the concept and, and our way of working is that those programmes and our specialist support will enable the business to create a business case that says, this actually is worth doing. And then if it requires funding and investment, it's the sort of thing that can can go forward to the um, you know for us to look at the um, the grant support as well. So small business obviously will have a, potentially a small amount of money that can invest, but um, it might be a little project, but you know it might have a really massive impact. So a lot of this is also about what's the impact, what's the benefit, what's the productivity efficiency gain um, that can be um, achieved through some of these projects. And not just um, cost reduction or efficiency, also revenue gain, mm. it's because obviously, you know, productivity is about the whole thing getting better. It's about increasing the efficiency across the whole organisation. So it's not just about costs and processes. It's also about revenue generation as well. Yeah, I, and, and actually, I was going to come to Kenny on some of this as well, because uh, just taking David's question just a stage further, what's in this for government? If, if, if this money is, 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 is grant funded and is coming from government, because I suspect it's not coming out of the Jersey business budget, um, if it's government funding 50% of it, what's, what's in it for government? What, and and, and I, I guess that might be a question you can or can't answer, but uh, if businesses are paying half and the taxpayer is paying the other half, what's the upside? Well, you may, I suppose you mentioned tax that there's there's bound to be an increase in revenue there. Um, if the more successful a business is, the more tax it will pay. Um, really, just a buoyant economy is is really what we're aiming for here. And, and as I said, over two years of uh, you know business have had a really difficult time over these last two years. It's important to see that the economy recover and and more growth um, back in the island, whether that be um, you know in, in in businesses out of town or, or in in the local high street. That's that's really what it's all about, Murray. Yeah, and I suspect there's a there's a recruitment side to this in terms of at the moment there's a shortage of staff and everyone's talking about it, um, and we can't recruit and there's not enough people. So I'm guessing if a business is more productive it can do more with the amount of people that it has is is that am i am i on the right lines with that christine what your, your thoughts on that 
yeah, it's, it's about making making the, the it's not just about making the money, it's about making everybody happier. If you've got the business improving and productive, the employees engaged, they're naturally going to not work harder, but more work more productive, less waste time, and therefore their jobs will be less pressured. Um, also, you've got ways of technology as well. Um, you've got digital workers now starting to come in. And that would, you know, that takes off the boring and the monotonous jobs off people, allowing the, the employees to actually spend time on areas that matter and actually then feel they're making a difference. So it helps the engagement and the satisfaction of employees as well. OK, staying with you, Christine, for, if I may, Jane uh, said a question in for the productivity leadership courses. Uh, are the costs of these, if any, published on the Jersey Business website and are bookings made via the website? I'm sure you've got good news on this. It is good news. I mean, there is a very, there is a minimal charge for these, but they are heavily subsidized. Both courses are heavily subsidized by Jersey Business. Um, the costs are on the website. Um, bookings can be made by the website or just emailing the Jersey Business team. OK, it's fine. Um, the uh, technology questions come up a couple of times here and Neil with a question on that technology appears to be a key area. What involvement have we had with Digital Jersey to support this area of technology? So technology to improve businesses and their productivity. Uh, Alexia, coming to you. Yeah, so we work really, uh, we work closely with um, Digital Jersey. Um, a lot of the, the work that they're doing is at an industry level. So they're looking at um, sort of improving and looking at infrastructure and technology across industry, um, across industry sectors. And what we're looking at is specific business, um, it, how technology can, it can um, evolve within, in, within individual businesses. So taking those sort of, big industry challenges and then um, driving them into individual businesses so that's sort of how we work with them and for example um, we're doing some work with the retail sector at the moment where we are looking at um, doing sort of uh, like technology uh, workshops to say what, what, are, what are your challenges how do we think technology can address some of those challenges? And we're working with Digital Jersey uh, and actually with the Eagle Labs to say, what, where, are the where are the technology solutions for these, some of these challenges? And are they in Jersey? Are they somewhere else? How can we actually make this uh, sort of alive for people so that we can, we can work together with all of our partners to bring these solutions um, into Jersey? And I think, I think quite often the challenge here is that when you're running a business, you can see that you've got a bit of a challenge in a particular area, but you don't necessarily understand the solutions that are out there to address those challenges. So what we're trying to do is to work with industry groups and with individual businesses to say, OK, tell us what your challenges are. We'll go away with our partners to find out the technology solutions for some of those challenges and bring them back to you so that you, we can sort of explain and showcase, I suppose, what some of these things can do. Um, and similarly, at an individual level, we can work with a business to say, well, you know, what is your particular challenge here? And is there a technology solution that we can help, we can go and identify? Or is there just a process change that you can make to make that thing um, more efficient so technology is often an answer but it's not always an answer and and typically we find that if the process is not um if the process isn't slick enough you know if it's got too much waste in it you, what you don't want to do is to repli replicate that in technology you want to smooth out that process and then put technology in, in the back of it but there's some really clever stuff out there um, and we definitely do we, we are working with digital jersey and we are working with the eagle labs who've got access to some incredible um uh innovators so um yeah, so that work, that is that is working really well, and we want to accelerate that as well. And I think this ecosystem that we're trying to build around um, having a specialist resource, having the improvement program, having our industry specialists as well, you know, is and the reason for having a webinar like this is to raise the conversation so that we can have more conversations with businesses and really understand what their challenges are. So it's great to you know to be able to have this opportunity and and a productivity week because we want to have a conversation about this so that we understand what the challenges are and we can go away with our partners and find the solutions but that's the whole purpose of this is to start talking about it 
Yeah, and even more talk about it at the Jersey Chamber of Commerce lunch on the 6th yeah. of July, which I know that you'll be presenting at, Alexia, along with yeah. Bob, and we look forward to that as well. Tickets are available for that right now. Don't hang around long on that. Another question in, uh, to qualify for the grant, this will come to you, Kenny. To qualify for the grant, you mentioned that you need to have completed the business improvement programme. I can see that the next cohort for the programme runs September to December, uh, with a grant application ending on the 16th of October. Does it mean if you've not completed of the program you cannot apply from the for the grant this time around i see you were just about to type an answer to that one but i'm coming to you anyway yeah um no uh, you don't have to have been on the business improvement program i think you know what what I was mentioning there is it may help you um you know many businesses will be able to um come up with their own project with or without having gone on the, the business improvement program but what, what we were saying there is this will help you to, um, to to build your own your own project, uh, working alongside Jersey Business and our specialists on the on the program. So, yeah, you can apply with or without having attended the program. All right, thank you, uh, thank you very much for answering that. Can yes, I, Alexi, yes. Can I, can I just add a couple of things to that sure. um, as well? I mean, we we do know that businesses are looking at improvement, they're looking at technology, and. Uh, if there are if people have got opportunities and they are unsure as to whether or not they're going to go with them um, then I would suggest that they just come and talk to us about that and see what is the support that we can offer to help sort of see that project through and it might be that we can support with a little bit of the project planning um, or you know the assessment of what the impact might be and that then going for a, a grant might be the right answer so I think if you've got a project and you think that you need support in any guise then come and talk to us about it and we can make sure that you get the right package of support and also on so that's that's one thing and on the um, on the grant just to be clear our expectation is that funding will be ongoing or that funding will be available next year so while Whilst we are, whilst there's a sort of cut off for this year, I wouldn't say that that was a cut off for the for the scheme. So, you know, if people are have got ideas of projects, whenever they might be happening, come and talk to us about it because we can still work with you, um, e even if it misses that sort of deadline for for this year we can make sure that it's ready for first thing in the new year and and work around a time scale that suits the business mm. so i i don't want people to leave thinking that you know if they haven't got a got a plan by the beginning of october then that, you know it's curtains that's not the case at all so come and talk to us and we can help manage those time frames and that you know, a lot of that is around making sure that the funding gets allocated and, and, and that type of thing. But we obviously need to work with the business to make sure that it's suitable for the time frame for the business. So come and talk to us, I guess, is the message. Thank you. A couple of questions left to go. And thank you to everyone who's, uh, who's, who's put questions in. We're coming up to uh, up to time on this. But before we go, um, and this is a very basic question, so forgive me. Productivity, efficiency very often termed as the same thing. And I know that actually getting 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 it to grasp with productivity is something that um, Jersey Business have been doing so well. Chamber for a long time have been talking about that we need to, we need to look at productivity. Government's been talking about it for, well, as long as I can remember. So are they the same thing, efficiency and productivity, or, or are they different? Who wants to pick this up? Or is that okay? Um. They are similar. Productivity is about growth. It's about being proactive and forward looking. Efficiency is more about savings and cutting and being more efficient in, in the programme. So efficiency, I suppose, is a subset of productivity is probably the best way of looking at it. OK, finally, thank you. Uh, a question, uh, and I'll come back to you, Alexa, on this. Um, in terms of success for this what will success look like because we we've we've sort of measured and taken a temperature check of where businesses are and where there's some opportunity here uh, will we be able to take a second temperature check at some time and go that's a bit more of an improvement um, because obviously we need some outcomes too yeah, that's, uh, that's a really, really interesting and quite a challenging question, Murray, so thanks for that. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, at a macro level, as in a Jersey Island level, the answer is that the high level indicators get better and, you know, 
GDP, GVA, all of that sort of stuff heads in the right direction. And for, for a very long time, it hasn't been heading in the, in the right direction. It's been at, at the very best static, if not slightly declining, which is, uh, which is a Jersey um, you, it's a challenge across the world. Uh, and COVID really hasn't helped with that. Um, but actually for organizations like Jersey Business and for the business community, um, the answer really is, is it being able to see and to be able to feel within your business that it's slicker, that people are happier, that they've got less wasted time um, and that the whole thing is just, you know, moving better uh, and that you feel within your business that people are doing valuable work all the time. Mm. So I think that it's partly about, you know, you can analyze you can analyze time uh you can analyze uh waste so there are lots of measures that you can look at within a business and and part of what we are interested in is well, what are those measures that are really important to business yeah. um but i think so, so when we are measuring for example the impact of the business improvement program we're looking at what's the cost saving what's the time saving um, is there investment into technology? So those will be things that we will try and assess by way of saying this has really made a difference. And I think they're quite similar things to to the to the to what the business community um, and individual businesses would want to assess in their own business. Mm. So investment in technology, type, you know, removal of waste. Those are the sorts of things that we will measure at an individual level. And I don't know I, if that answers the question. It does answer the question because it was a, a really tricky question. I think you did answer it. I, I, it just occurred to me that the one area that a lot of businesses have been talking about is well-being. And, and I, I'm guessing along with all of the other things, and, and, and Kenny Wright said, it's not always about the money. Um, the well-being of a business and its employees is, is, is absolutely crucially important to keeping that business upright. So, so I guess well-being is one of those things that you can measure from productivity as well. Mm hmm. And definitely the engagement of employees. And I think one of the interesting things results from the survey was that in actual fact, a, a lot of them, and I'm completely generalizing here, but the feeling that you get when you look at those results is that people have frustrations in their work. They know that there are things that they're doing that are inefficient. They know that there is waste there. They know that, people, that organizations are wasting money. They probably are doing stuff and thinking, I don't know why I'm doing this because nobody ever looks at it. It's a complete waste of time. You know, you quite often hear that sort of stuff. So if we can get to the point where we are engaging with those people and saying, okay, tell, you know, let's help you with a little bit of a process to say these are the things that are frustrating if I could do this I could change that I can make it a lot simpler let's try and find a way of making that happen uh, and that's what our programs are all about and our support is all about if we can do that people will become happier that because they will be you know they won't be grappling with these frustrations they're more likely then to be engaged they're more likely to feel that they can contribute they'll have more of a purpose business will then become more efficient uh, it will effectively become more profitable um, and productive uh, which means it becomes more sustainable and then it can start looking at you know other things in terms of its positive impact across not just shareholders shareholder value but also stake what we call stakeholder value so you know what is the positive impact that it's having on the the environment the community its workforce etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's a really interesting sort of network of cause and effect um, here which I think is really quite exciting because it's you know you, you start one thing and you it's almost like peeling back the layers of the onion and um, you can have a really big impact just by doing some small little things but well-being and engagement I think uh, we we have shown this survey has shown that um, people want to and can identify ways to make their lives and the lives of the business better and we want to try and unlock some of that. Excellent. Um, thank you. Uh, that was a very good answer, actually. Um, and to finish with, here's a comment rather than a question from Lee, who said, I think that the prime example of business productivity and growth in the past few years within its market is Jersey business, certainly leading by example. Excellent presentation, product, service. Thank you. So yeah, let's let's end on that high. That's about I'm happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Big tick there. Um, 
always great to engage with you guys. Thank you so much for doing so. Uh, I know that Chamber members will get a great deal out of this. And we look forward to seeing you on the 6th of July uh, for the Productivity Lunch at the Chamber Lunch. Until then, from everyone here, we wish you well. Have a great day. And uh, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thanks a lot, Mary. Thanks, everyone, for Thanks, watching. Thanks, Mary. Thank you.